positive feedback loop after that first year, carried year after year after tournament, after NCAA tournament after year. And the, even the guys who came after you, you know, it's just the strength became, uh, it became a symbol of, uh-oh, here come the Bulldogs. All right, all right, hey, sitting here with my, one of my best friends in the whole world who I met in April of 1999 right after the Elite Eight run um, at Gonzaga University in the NCAA tournament. So Casey Calvary from uh, Spokane, Washington via Tacoma. Good to be here with you, buddy. My first gig as a strength coach over at Gonzaga started there. We, they just done their Elite Eight run. And I'll tell you what, there was a group of, group of fellas on that team that were pretty special. They, uh, they wanted back. They wanted to get back to, the, back to that, that tournament and you know, from a little small Jesuit school up in Spokane, Washington to uh, to get there. You know, they brought in this crazy meathead football bodybuilder guy. You know, one of our great boosters, Josh Burroughs, introduced me to Mark Few and they decided to try something different. So um, we did it, they had a goal. The goal was to be the strongest team in the country, to be the heroes in their own movie. And it was legit. Our Gonzaga oral history series this week with the most famous shot in school history. I talked with Casey Calvary about the tip in that put Gonzaga on the map. The Remember, uh, we, we were all lifting that summer and we had a, a decent strength program going there at Gonzaga. Um, but we weren't known as a super physical team. We were, we were skilled, uh, we could score a lot of points, we could do a lot of things uh, on the fast break, but and we were really athletic, but we weren't a real physically strong team. And that really changed um, the summer that you came and took over. I think uh, the way that we started lifting was a more football style of lifting. I know, I know for myself, I went from, I was about 215. And then when I went in my sophomore year, and then that next year I went in at like 260, 265. And everyone was up a significant amount of weight and stronger. Um, and it wasn't just the, the, the way that that changed us in terms of what we could do on the basketball court. It, it sort of gave us uh, an advantage competitively because we, we found out that we had limits that that we didn't know we could reach. Um, you know, when you lift with with Big Mike Chrysler, when you think you're done with the rep, right, there's always one more. There's always a power negative after that, or there's always one more set. You're never quite done. And right when your arms fail, then, you know, your buddy or your coach is right there to just help you do that last rep or that one next thing. So, you know, you find you can get a little more done uh, with your buddy there or with your strength coach than you could by yourself. And then fourth quarter of the game or something besides just being physically stronger than the opponents, you know how to push past exhaustion. You know that when you think you're done, there is a little more in the tank, especially if you have a buddy or a coach that can grab you and pull you along and, and drag it out of you. So I think that was the valuable lesson besides just like the added muscle. It was the added mental muscle that you brought to our program that we carried with us for years. So we had a mental chip on our shoulder and then we had physical bodies and mental toughness to back it up, you know, and that's how we continued to make those runs after that first year. It's how we sustained it, you know, it was, was it wasn't, you know, luck or we didn't just have, you know, one great shooting team, you know, you have to have a, a steady program and you really elevated us. Well, I, I appreciate that. It was obviously one of the greatest gifts that I got was to do it, but I took it as serious as anything I've ever done in my life. And True. the fact that you guys were hungry every single time. I mean, I would get guys on the team calling me saying, hey, I had to do this study hall or I had this shooting practice. Can you meet me at eight o'clock at night? And I would go meet you guys and I would take, take you to that limit. And I knew that it, when I have the team in the back of my truck and I have you pulling the truck with rope, that when you get on the court in the fourth quarter, in the end of the second half, there's nobody that would get in your way. I knew that instinctually. We all know that, you know, it's just like out in the in, in the caveman days, you know that if you beat up enough saber tooth tigers, when the next one comes to kill your family, you're gonna freaking be able to tear that saber tooth tiger apart. And that's what the Gonzaga Bulldogs had. And it, it that positive feedback loop after that first year carried year after year after tournament, after NCAA tournament, after year. And the, even the guys who came after you, you know, it's just the strength became, uh, 
it became a symbol of, uh oh, here come the bulldogs. They're, they're, we're gonna get hurt when we come inside the key. We're gonna get hurt. We don't want to go in there as, if we don't have to. We got known as a physical team, and, and yeah. that would, that that was a change from just being known as you know a, a very efficient and very skilled team. You know, that's a different reputation, and that's a different style of playing. So yeah, and and even just to bring it all full circle with some of this movement at, at Hero Dad Bob, it's it's one of the things, and you and I have talked about this for years is. Be the hero in your own goddamn movie, you know? And I look back at you guys at 19, 20 years old, you guys had that. And you're looking back and you get to replay that movie. And now in business and as a father yourself, you get to be the hero for your kids and in your business and in the community still of Spokane and here in beautiful Hawaii, you know, I, I, I get to hopefully help some other people and continue to be a hero and look back and I want my kids and I know your kids, you know? It's not just the those sweet 16 and elite eight teams, it's being a dad and it's being a role model to other people in the community. And, and you you and so many of the other Zags amplify that as much as anyone in the world. And I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity to have a sliver of that. And I'm grateful to our friendship that's been decades now and will continue. Our kids will be friends and I love you and I appreciate it. All right, aloha, be safe, be healthy, be fit, get it. Go Zags. <laughs>